you want to see how I transform this piece into this distressed bar cabinet with a shabby sheet design, keep watching. Never want to shy away from a challenging piece. Let me show you what I picked up today. This is a 1930s piece. It was some sort of a bookcase, has a glass front door to it. But as I was uh, taking it from the customer, it was falling apart. As you can see, the back's out. And I've just got clamps on here because it wasn't structurally sound either. So I had to reattach the sides so that I could at least stand it up and make it structurally sound and then add back in the shells and see what I'm going to do with it. So I invite you to follow me along on this journey. It should be interesting and see what I come up with. Okay, so let me give you the latest on this piece, this challenge that I took on. This piece was literally, literally falling apart. Uh, so let me show you some of the things that happened and some mistakes that I made actually in trying to repair something. Okay, so first of all, we're looking at the side here. And this, the, both these sides separated. And these joints had to be re-glued, bottom and top. So as you heard me mention before, the piece was falling apart when I picked it up. And at one point, the door seemed like it was a good shape, but at one point the piece actually fell forward and the door frame just fell apart completely. So here you see I'm just re-gluing the sides. And what I'm doing here is putting, I'm gluing the top and the bottom to one of the side frames so that and let that dry and once that dries I would be able to put the glass back in and glue glue in the other side <laughs> mistake I thought I had a good idea to fix it and it turned out to be non-essential and I'll explain that in a minute okay so we're looking at the bottom here and even after glue up these sides were still loose so what I did is I reinforced them with this board across the back I used pocket screws to uh, tie it together also here on the side I put on each side, I did put a board there as well to make to, re, to firm it up so that it didn't wiggle and was sturdier. Now, as I said, the back wasn't on, right? The back slides into grooves that are routed in each end of the boards there. So when I glued everything back together, I did it without the back being on. And when I went to put the back on, I realized the mistake I made. I should have put the back on before I glued it up because the uh, grooves don't extend the whole way down. And uh, obviously, you could, I couldn't just bend the board to go into the groove. So what I thought I would do to fix that and not have to take it apart again is I routed in a groove all the way down to the end, matching the size of the groove that was in there, assuming that I could just slide the back that way all the way up. And it would have worked, but in, in doing that, guess what? The sides, this was before I put those these support beams in. The sides gave out again, and I was able to just slide it up into the way it would have been without these grooves in it. So I did get it back in. I glued it back up, reinforced it. So now what I had to do is go back in here with wood putty and, and putty those, those up again. Also put a... Uh, I, I, cut a piece that's as big as that groove to put in there and glue it in because these, the back would start sliding down now that there was a groove all the way in. So I wanted to reinforce that so that did not happen. So, you know, you learn by your mistakes and you got to be resourceful. Step one always is to, either, step one is to clean it up before I start painting.
next obvious step is to paint the piece and I'm using a uh, Andy Sloan chalk paint for this. It's called Old, Old Okra and uh, the surface, it'll go over any surface. There wasn't a lot of prep needed for this, just need to make sure it was clean. And you just brush it on and every once in a while you spray your brush with some water just to keep it, keep the paint thinner so it moves better and, it's, and it goes on a lot smoother. And so you just take your time and, and brush it on. So in the distressing process, you use about a 220 grit sandpaper and just go over the areas that you feel under normal wear would be worn under normal circumstances. I don't like to do it too heavily. Um, just as I said, certain areas, some of the edges to give it that used look. So this piece took about three coats. Now I'm ready to seal it. And what I'm using here is Annie Sloan Clear Wax. Put this on with a natural bristle brush. Just put it on nice and smooth. Make sure you're getting all the areas and just brush it on. And every once in a while you wanna go over it with a rag just to take off any excess wax that, that may form there. But basically you're just giving it that protective seal. Once you've sealed the piece with the clear wax, what you can do, and what I often do is I get, there's Andy Sloan has a dark wax, and I just give it a very light brushing with the dark wax to give it some depth. It adds to the, uh, the background to the piece, adds some depth, and in some corners you might put on a little heavier just to put some shadowy parts in there, and it also highlights the distressing that you did. It is completed. I made this a bar cabinet. All distressed and sealed with some dark wax highlights in it. I think it came out pretty good. And here you see a before and after of the pieces. <laughs> 